Part two. Number three. Why is this so bad and why am I wasting my time with this abysmal shit when I could be jerking off to Hillary Duff instead? Now, I'm not just trying to pick on things, repeat what happened, and then just laugh at the failure. There's nothing very cool about that, and I don't really intend to bash Carrie or Thicky. I actually like Jim Carrey a lot and give him a lot of slack if and when I don't find him funny sometimes. And Thicky's okay in my book, even if he's arguably weirder than Carrey in reality. I'm not trying to just pound on a movie that failed to perform. I'm investigating how and why this movie manages to be the most offensively harmfully bad movie I've ever seen. I'm not saying it can't get worse than this, but I've yet to master the power of imagination necessary to conjure what it would take to actually be worse, yet still make it into a movie theater. I've seen more disappointing more lost potential, more contrary to its source material, more of a betrayal to its original concept, but I've never seen just plain worse than this, so I must know why. Why is this movie so bad? What makes it the worst thing I've ever seen? Maybe there's wisdom to be found there. Maybe we can learn yet untold lessons from the deepest reaches of humankind's imagination. Maybe the universe itself would be a... Oh, wait, wait. Did I just say deepest reaches? As in Jackson? Reach is? Dear Christ, is this what going batshit crazy feels like? Or am I onto something here? You tell me, Lord. And if you think I'm being too hard on this movie, or setting the bar too high and being unfair or whatever, well, fuck off. Star Wars came out six years before this movie. National Lampoon's Vacation was released the same year as this turd. Actually, let's take a quick look at some of this film's peers being filmed around the same time and released in 1983. At the time, cinema was such that good, even fantastic movies were made almost all the time. Not that all 1983 movies are good, but many movies were made in and around 1983 that were. Many of the movies I just listed include actors also near the beginning of their careers. People knew Richard Pryor from stand-up specials and comedy routines, and maybe if they saw The Toy, which was extremely underrated at the time. Most people had no idea who he was going into Superman 3. You might be thinking, but it's a Superman movie. It wasn't centered on Pryor. Well, actually, other than Superman himself, we follow Pryor's character in that movie more than the actual villains. We even learn more about Pryor's character than we did Superman in this one. Now, Superman 3 may not be Scarface or a Christmas story, but it's no Copper Mountain either. Although it did have a skiing scene in it. There's just no excuse for the utter lack of vision, talent, or care that went into the making of this film. It doesn't even look like anybody's having any fun. Not even the musical performances, really. They look like they're very aware that this is a movie. They're being filmed, and they don't want to mess it up for that reason alone. The irony is that all the fuck-ups in the world don't matter if you're having some real, actual fun with it. And hopefully it has something to do with the story. Sometimes a couple of real slip-ups now and then can really add to the atmosphere and get you in the mood for some harder laughs later. Or just a carefree time in the face of a more competent plot. Number 4. The Plot The meat and potatoes of why the plot itself is so unbearable can be broken down into two parts. Alan Thicke and Jim Carrey. 
And by that I mean Jackson Reach and Bobby Todd. So anyway, Carrie and Dickie are on their way to the ski resort to take Club Med by storm or some shit. To take Club Med by storm. Thicky seems to be up for anything, even though when they get there, all he seems interested in doing at all is skiing and being an asshole. How's my hair, huh? <laughs> More on that in a minute. Carrie basically just wants to get laid. He laments how he's terrible at talking to girls, blah blah blah. So they're at the resort and they take what feels like forever, making small talk with the management, smiling through their teeth, talking up the resort and how much fun they're gonna have. Anyway, at some point they split up when Thicky becomes focused on the Pro-Am ski race and this douche directs him to talk to some trode named Sonny about entering. Carrie finds the aforementioned band sitting up outside somewhere and says this. Bump and Ronnie Hawkins playing right here in the mountains. I saw him when he played in Grimsby once. What a night. Does this. Mr. Bertrangles. And this happens. You don't sound too bad, kid. You sound kind of familiar. Like and that leads right into before. this. There's no consequence or result from what just happened, nor is it ever mentioned again. It's like the director just wanted some connection between the main characters and the band before they continued on, as if these were just two different movies that were cut together for some reason. So then Alan Thicke skis along with some other people, but wipes out quickly. And we're back to Carrie, who finds two girls in a jacuzzi, and one of them has a t-shirt on because that's really wild, and talks to them like this. I like to stand at poolside. Oh, and occasionally, get happy feet. Whoa. And does this. <laughs> Poor Bobby. He almost had him. Then he's talking to Yogi the bartender. This character delivers some of the most horrible acting of all time whenever he opens his mouth. It's nothing personal against the guy, I don't give a fuck if he's talented or not, it's just that if you're in a movie, shouldn't you be at least somewhat studied at acting? I know some people give bad performances now and then, but Jesus, it's like they grabbed him off the street that day and yelled, ACTION! Yeah, I do lots of skiing, but I do more eating. Oh, no. It's all that matters is style. I just gotta work at it. Oh, wow. Not that you went past here about 100 miles an hour. Make it stop! So Carrie fails again, this time at the bar with some random woman, and Thicky meets the bartender Yogi, and talks to that sunny chode about getting the last spot at the Pro-Am ski race, even though he just tried to ski and was terrible at it. The guy tells him he promised a spot to Yogi, which fills Thicky with a douchey, scoffing disrespect for some reason. He's, He's standing, standing right, right there. there! Sonny figures they can race for the spot to which Yogi responds with I'm easy. And Thicky says It's great. <laughs> Fine with me. Yeah, the extra run will probably do me some good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll we'll see about that. Alright. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Me and Yogi. <laughs> um, what the <laughs> hell? It turns out Thicky thinks Yogi is too fat. That's it. Apparently a guy with a beer belly that skis all the time is no match for Alan Thicke, who sucks at it a lot. A strange overconfidence wouldn't be so bad for the movie, but the lengths it's taken to is just bizarre. Shortly thereafter, Thicke talks to some skiers waxing their skis in the middle of a circle jerk, and one guy says this absurd piece of dialogue. I asked him what his name was, and if he drove a truck, he said his name was Hot Stuff, and I just said, good luck. Thank you, all right. If you didn't understand that, that's okay. I think only blonde people can. And Thicky spends a couple of minutes talking so much smarmy trash about Yogi, it doesn't even matter if it were a well-played scene or not. It doesn't make sense. This is all because he thinks Yogi's a walrus? That big walrus of a bartender. He's only met him once, behind a bar, and he had a double chin and a pop belly. But he wasn't morbid or anything. Maybe this is a small point, but if your main character is going to start blasting somebody he hardly knows, two strangers he hardly knows for being too fat to ski, it won't help the audience like him. I suppose if you think he's funny that's something, but his actions are over the top and just stupid. So if he wins the race, he beat a guy who's too fat to ski, and he's been a jerk to him behind his back. If he loses, he looks like a double asshole for getting shown up like that and being so moronically wrong. Again, this is a protagonist we're talking about here. 
It isn't like he's about to become some villain or maybe learn some big lesson and redeem himself. I don't want to give too much away, but oh fuck it, a few minutes from now Yogi wins the race. But before the race starts, we're treated to our second Ronnie Hawkins performance. Yeah, I was starting to miss these guys. Well, I won't play the whole song for you, but these people seem to like it a bunch. I guess it's possible I'm being too hard on the musical aspect. Maybe one song now and then isn't so bad. Wait, what? To what? Two in a row? What the fuck? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. And welcome to so, Mountain. Okay, what was the point of that? So now we're listening to this I asshole talk about the Ronnie Hawkins concert. First of all, I'd, I'd like to remind you all. That Wait, it's going on at the same time? Why did we have to see the other guy talk about it? Why do we need another Hawkins song anyway? Now we're back to Carrie in the hotel now with a girl he met in a previous scene. Uh, they, okay, they had a brief conversation about how she loves her boss, Sonny, and she might move or something, I don't know. And Carrie talked to her about his girl problems, even though she's a girl and she, uh, <sighs> Anyway, wait, we're back with Hawkins again? And he's bringing Rita Coolio to the stage. Another song! So we're 30 minutes into this movie, and this will be the fourth song we have to sit through. Good God. Listen, I'm gonna start praying to a different God if you ever allow another movie this bad to exist again. Somewhere in there, Sonny and this admirer employee fall off a thing and they kiss in the snow. Cool. So back to the plot, the race I mentioned takes place and surprise surprise the guy who lives and works at the ski resort and skis all the time and has the respect of everyone who knows him easily spanked the guy who collapsed on the slope just a short time ago. So then Carrie, oh, oh wait, another song with another singer, god, this, oof, this guy's like a poor man's Kenny Rogers. Anyway, skip to some weird helicopter scene, I guess, where nothing happens except some guy once won some races and now he's gonna get on this chopper. I don't know. I, I can barely hear what they're saying because the sound levels are so poorly mixed. Hey, where is everybody today? What? Well, it looks like it's only me today. Name? Stevie. Duncan Stevie. Dean John Clark Yes. Winner of the World Championships in 56. You yes. did what? The World Cup. 66, 67, 68, yes. Ah, fuck this shit. Oh man, another song! You're probably thinking, Oh, come on, mister, you know very well how many songs are in this movie and everything. Stop acting so surprised, you dick cheese. I haven't watched this movie more than I've had to, and even now, most of what I remember is the sense of being overwhelmed with shock and disappointment. This is the first time I've watched it in years, and some of this stuff still takes me by surprise. My god, this song is still going, isn't it? Harry takes a shower and walks into a woman's sauna. Another song. Thicky somberly watches a few pro-am races. Wow. He sure looks excited. What a great decision to have him act this way about the fantastic Club Med experience. But wait. There's more. Apparently, Thicky did learn a little lesson about being a jerk or whatever. He's not very clear about that, except that he was wrong about Yogi. Then, as if the movie was just waiting for him to realize that, some announcer Jagoff makes it known that Jackson Reach will be skiing in Yogi's place, and the chick who loves her boss who's now friends with these dorks just happens to know that Yogi wanted him to have the spot because... Yogi doesn't need it. Then why did Yogi enter the race at all? I guess he could have had a different reason for entering, but usually when you enter a race, it's because you wanted to, to enter the race. He didn't even have any fucking reason to think Thicky wanted to get back in. Hell, for all he knew, Thicky might have left Copper Mountain or L whatever. So Thicky races the guy and loses. But he's happy about it. Right. So Carrie makes Sonny laugh faster than he can deliver the joke that makes him laugh, and because of this and Carrie's insecurity, Sonny suggests that he learns to ski right away. Or, kind of, he 
said he should do something, and then Carrie's like, I guess I'll ski. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. He, he goes to his first lesson, but he sees some flirty girl with hot titties and accidentally goes down a slope out of control, runs through the race course, and makes good time. In fact, it's the best run we've seen all week. <laughs> so he fell at the end because I don't know, might as well. And two ladies suddenly want to wax his ski and carry him off the. Oh man! Then somebody's getting a few words out of the champion skier and the loser of the race at the same time. I guess that's normal. And Thicky seems really happy he lost. I guess he's just glad to be there, having a great time taking club med by storm and whatnot. Then Carrie's walking along with the two girls. Thicky asks him, right in front of them, what impression worked on them. And he says, Bobby Todd. Trickly Bobby Todd. But his problem wasn't that he didn't know that. He was supposed to be bad at being himself around women. It's not like it never occurred to him. His first line in the movie was this. See, when, I, when I talk to women, I, I can't seem to be myself. I, I get nervous and I, I get carried away trying to be someone else. What happened? Did the fall he took unlock a PS3 trophy in his head and now he can activate himself when talking to girls? <laughs> and then it ends with another song. And I forgot to mention, the movie began with a full, dreadful song over the opening credits. That's nine songs in a 60-minute movie, I think. Oh, please don't make me go back and count. I'm pretty sure it's nine. Continued in part three.